Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Inside the Den. Now today we're going to take a look at Castle Empire and this is a free-to-play browser-based strategy MMO and you can see it's from Ubisoft which did they also created the standalone game The Settlers so you'll see when we get in there it's very similar style and stuff like that but this is the basic of creating your avatar essentially you give yourself a name and then you select one of these little avatar guys and we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually go back here because this pretty, pretty much looks the one back here there we go it looks like the one we'd like to use and we just hit play now and here we go so we're logging in so essentially what you're going to do is you're going to start out and you're going to have your own little space on an island and you're basically going to build up your town village city whatever you want to call it so here we go all military structures have an influence area if other military units enter this area they will be attacked automatically all right so let's see what we've got here so we've got our basic layout it's kind of cool we can zoom really far in or really far out you can see we've got some cool little uh, animations of little animals and stuff moving around. We're gonna, as we start to build different structures and stuff like that, we'll see our guys moving around. We've got our chat down here in the bottom left-hand corner, but let's take a look at this first quest they give us. So they want us to build our first building, so we need to build a woodcutters. So let's go ahead and go in here, and we've got a couple different options. We can remove a street, we can build a street, or we can build a woodcutter. Now one thing that you give you a little bit of a tip, I have played the game a little bit, one thing you want to pay attention to is where you build your buildings. Now there's obviously a woodcutter, so I want him to be close to a lot of the fir these fir trees, because he's, he's going to be cutting, he's going to be essentially cutting this stuff down. So we went ahead and built it right there, so he has access to all of these trees, and here comes my little guy right now, my little builder. So he's going to cruise over there and start, uh, start hammering away and building that up. But we're going to make it easier for him, we're going to build a little road, so to build our road we click once, and then we kind of drag where we want it to go. And there we go. We've got our little road built over to our fir woodcutter. Now, the other thing that you want to pay attention to is um, also as you start to get these other new areas, you can see right here I've kind of got this little hidden area behind the, in this fog of war. Now, one of the first areas they give you, they allow you just to kind of use one of your explorers and find that area. Now, all of your areas are going to be found by using your explorers. But only the first one are you going to be able to actually take without force. So you're going to be able to, you're going to be given that one right off the bat. So you're going to have access to that area and be able to build. As soon as you build a storage uh, building in that area, you're going to have access to it. But the other ones, essentially, you can't take them over until you clear them of bandits. Now, unfortunately, the game right now, you can see, has some has a pretty decent size area. I believe there's like one, and there's like two here, then there's a third one here, then there's a fourth one like there, fifth one down in this corner. So there's about six or seven areas that you can total in, in total take over. Now, unfortunately, that's kind of the limit of the game right now, as you um, as there is no PvP. But they do have plans in the future to have PvP. So the idea is right now, and it also is in beta. Now, the only reason that I'm doing this review is because, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much a release game. The cash shop is open. You can buy these gems. You can purchase items for gems and stuff like that. So. There we go, we completed our first quest by building one woodcutter, so let's hit OK. And now we, we need to build a sawmill. So we go down to our little building here, and there we go, there's our little sawmill. We want that, of course, to be nice and close to our, to our mayor's house and to our woodcutter. Now going back to the PvP, so like I was saying, right now there is no PvP. But you are able to communicate with your chat, you're able to trade with other players, you're able to... Um, do those types of things and then you're also able to join a uh, guilds or alliance guilds they call them so here you can see a bunch of different guilds band of brothers or tagline bob and they've got a hundred players all of that different stuff so there's a lot of uh social uh things in the game right now but uh there's not a lot of actual um stuff as far as the uh, uh the pvp like i said so there we go, we've got our little building building right now. Let's take a look at some of this other stuff. And you can see here, all of these different buildings get di provide different resources and stuff like that. We can hire, highlight over them. And you can see player level 13 required, player level 17 required. Now once you get through the majority of the tutorial, you're going to be about level 10. And then there's going to be more quests and stuff like that that are going to progress you even further. Probably about to level 16 or 17 about. Now the difficulty with that is, is after you're done with all those quests, Right now, there's not any additional quests for you to complete and continue to level yourself. So you actually have to do it through through building up your garrison and building up your, your, your forces and going out and actually fighting bandits. So as you fight those bandits, you'll get additional experience when you win those those combat those uh, those battles, so to say. 
So we went ahead and we completed that. Now we're gonna to go to the mayor's house, which is our house, which is this right here. One thing that's really cool too is when you go in here, you'll see you've got the ability to upgrade these buildings. And you can upgrade by using that or you can uh, upgrade using gems, but that's not out yet. So eventually you're gonna be able to upgrade using gems, essentially turning all the gem items really into a lot of convenience type stuff. Hey, I just wanna move faster and stuff like that. But if you look, you've got basic, intermediate, advanced, expert, and military. So you can see you've got a lot of different resources here, a lot more than you. Usually games have like, you know, three or four different resources and that's it. But as you progress through and you have different uh, military units and different, uh, different types of buildings you need to build, you're going to need all of these different types of, uh, of resources. So that's all kept in the mayor's house or also in those individual storage buildings that you build on each new plot that you get access to. So there we go, we've completed access to the mayor's house. And now we need to build a forester because as your woodcutter goes along and he takes out, you can see him working right there and he takes out a bunch of these trees and you can see your little sawmill guy working away. Those trees will eventually completely disappear. So you have to build a forester so he's actually able to replenish, replenish the forest and replenish all of the areas with the fir trees. Now, once you get into these other types of trees, uh, you'll have to actually build one specifically for that and stuff like that, and so on and so forth, all the way up until the, the higher level units. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this, and I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna show you guys what the, what the city looks like when you get it more built out. It's not gonna be with the same character, it's gonna be with my other character that I have actually at level 20 and show you guys exactly what that looks like when everything's a little bit more built out and I can show you some of the combat and stuff like that. So I'll be right back. All right, so essentially now we're logged in. You can see I've got a hustle and bustling village and all that stuff going on. You can see there's stuff going on all over the place. You've got different exhausted mines and mines that need to be built and all kinds of stuff going on. I've got my full barracks, which are usually building these different guys let's see how many of these guys i can build i can build two and then let's go with some bowmen how many can, can i build here 25 i got tons i got loads of bows so we can build tons of bowmen then you've got your branch office once you build that you can actually start doing trade with other players and then this trade channel will actually show up you can update that you can see most people are actually after gold because gold allows you to update and do a lot of different things um, but you can see people are trading water for fish and uh, gold bars for granite and all that different stuff. So you, you use this, if you use this wisely, you can actually do pretty well if you don't have access to certain uh, resources, so to say. But you can see right here, I've got a bunch of trees that are knocked down, so my foresters kind of get, get to work a little bit. But one of the nice things is, is you can actually build out this these different uh, buffs, so to say. So you can see here, you've got buffs, and if we go, those are actually created in the provision house. We can go to buffs and you can see all the different ones and each one essentially will take and help you speed up the production in all of your different buildings. You also have the ability to transform, let's say you've got you know X number of fir wood planks, you can transform it into so many hardwood planks. So it, the, the game gives you an opportunity to use the stuff that you have and things like that to kind of create other stuff. And then you kind of need fish food because the different fishing areas, which are like down here, you see 919 fish. So you actually have to manage those resources because they will run out. So you have to pay attention to that as well as like these wheat fields, stuff like that. These will run out. You'll have to rebuild them. As you can see, I've got two exhausted ones there. So we're going to actually go in here and actually, I think I want to do this one. Yeah, let's do level two. So we'll drop that right there and then we'll do another level two right there. My little guys will head out and they'll start building there. So what we can do is we can take our buff and we can grab that. We can say, okay, well, we want to take and we want to increase production from, you know, we need some iron. So we're going to increase production from our iron smelter and from our iron weapon worker. And where's our iron? We've got to have an iron. Uh, maybe down here, copper smelter, coking plant. Hmm. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just go bow maker. Why not? But you can take and you can, you can, you can pump up the the actual production of any of these different things uh, or any of your different uh, your, your different buildings and stuff like that. So it gets really important to manage your resources and, and stuff like that and use these buffs to your advantage. Now, when you do go into combat, you're gonna go into, I can't actually get in there right now. So unfortunately, I can't get rid of this thing. Let's see, just escape, nope. Let's go and let's grab a building, that'll work. 
So there we go. So that got rid of it. So now we can take a look at our garrison. We can go ahead and go like that and pump up the number of uh, recruited troops into there. So you can see we can have a maximum of, 100, of 200. We've got 164 in here right now. So let's hit OK. Now what I can do is I can take that, that army and I can actually go and I can attack. And then I can go over here, cruise over here and find a target. Let's zoom out a little bit, make it easier. So you can see I've got different targets all over the place here. I've got several different little bandit buildings. But let's, uh, I don't want to, I don't actually want to attack right now. So we're going to go like that. And then you can take, you can click on each of these. And you can see what type of uh, creatures or what type of bandits are actually in there. You can see what kind of damage they do. You can see all of their statistics, stuff like that. Also, some of these, like you can see the bandit leader one, you can go in there and there's a bandit leader. So he's really powerful. He can do damage 300 to 500. So very powerful, especially since the majority of my actual, uh, my actual guys do like 20 to 40 in damage but when you do each time you take and you do one of these you actually get a battle report now we can replay the battle report and as you can see battles are not like this 3d uh thing they're very two-dimensional very kind of risk style so it's just showing you know the, the different groups on each side and they're going to attack back and forth normal units attacking so here we go we're going to attack and we're pretty much going to take out these these guard dogs real quick and then we're going to take out the ranger and you can see the big the big damage is actually done by uh, by my my bowmen because they they actually have a lot more damage 20 to 40 where these guys here are 20 to 40 but and the one thing that kind of stinks as far as i'm concerned is like if i get my attacks in even though i get what you're going to see i'm going to get my attacks in here here we go now even though i've taken him out right there uh he still gets an attack back so he kind of gets a one last attack which took out the rest of my guys here and a bunch of my guys there so it actually cost me resources so that kind of sucks even though i did win the battle now each time you win the battle not only do you earn experience which can go towards you leveling up but you also earn resources and and, and you can earn all kinds of different stuff from doing that now i mentioned before how you can go out and you can use your specialist and you can send so you've got the general which he basically leads your army then you've got your explorer and right now i have them out finding treasure see it take it's going to take another six hours um, and you got geologists and you can send them out and as they get higher and higher level they can go and they can look for you know gold or uh, coal or whatever so I'm gonna send these guys out looking for some iron and even sending them out looking for some iron that's gonna take about 60 minutes so they're off looking for that and it's gonna yeah it's gonna take about an hour so I have to wait for them to find that also as you progress through you're gonna get like daily logins and you'll get these things here which is added resources but I'm actually capped out on my on my fir wood right now and you can just dump that right into your mayor's house let's see if I can actually do it and nope you cannot add more fur to your storehouse upgrade your storehouse to increase storage so like I was saying you can do upgrades so we can go ahead and upgrade my mayor's house right there and you'll see right now that's kind of locked down you can see a little percentage counting down right there and three so on and so forth and then once that's done that'll go up to 100 percent and then it'll actually become a larger building which i was saying before you can see over here i built a couple new residents so i could have more people and, and these residents are level one these ones are actual level two so it's kind of cool to see the the differences there it is disappointing there's no pvp right now but it'll be it'll be kind of cool to see once they do have it in there how it's all going to work especially since everybody's kind of on these different islands now everybody also starts with the same island design so everybody kind of has the same structure and if you kind of master your build or whatever that kind of gets very important another thing to look at is your quests and right now you can see no active daily quests and no waiting quests supposedly eventually they're going to have these and that's going to be another way for you to earn resources and also to earn level ups and stuff like that so right now you know i've got this quest to reach level 21 but that's not going to actually it's just going to give me gold it's not going to actually give me any additional experience so like i said before all the experience is going to come from you going out and taking out bandits stuff like that so here's the cash shop you can see you can buy resources you can buy architectural stuff you can buy all kinds of different stuff. You got the black market where you can buy uh, buffs and different, uh, you know, ge geologists and, and scouts and uh, battle hard in general, all kinds of stuff like that. Like, you know, recovers twice as quickly from defeat and travels twice as quickly, all that different stuff. So they've got a bunch of cool stuff in the cash shop. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's trip inside the den. Don't forget to subscribe and keep yourself updated as each new episode is released. Also, don't forget to like and comment and let us know anything that we missed or anything that you wish we would have covered on this review. 
If you'd like to play or learn more about Castle Empire, you can read our full review at mmoden.com or just click the link in the description. Till next time, thanks for watching.